In this week's video fishing forecast for New England, we get a big fluke and king mackerel up in Massachusetts. Great fall togging taking place in Buzzards Bay as well as over in Narragansett Bay. Albies on the feed from the canal to Connecticut, big bluefish in Long Island Sound, and much more. Check it out. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Hey there, Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine with this week's web video fishing forecast for New England. I'm going to jump right into things this week, beginning up in Massachusetts. Uh, now, fluke season has been somewhat, uh, I'd call it, so-so at best in most places. Uh, but there's still time to get your doormat in this year. And one of the best places to hunt for them is the waters in and around the shoals of Nantucket. Um, while the season closes on October 9th up there, you can still get in on the bite like Alan Sheriff did last week. Now, he took a trip uh, out to Nantucket with Captain Jeff Viamari of Bad Influence Sport Fishing, well known for his bottom fishing prowess. The boat had a full limit of fluke to nine pounds in. As you can see in this photo, some really nice, flat, calm seas. Those are the kind of seas that I always want to see when I go out on the boat, but I don't always get a chance to do it. So if you want to hit that late season doormat, the uh, Nantucket Shoals are a great place to head to right now. Uh, next up, Jeff Brown sent me an email over the weekend. Uh, I want to just let me know that the funny fish are feeding heavily up in Buzzards Bay. All different funny fish up there. And uh, he, he said Sam and his co-worker Hans, pictured here, uh, finished a shift at the bike shop at Rideway Adventures in Mashpee, and they went out fishing. Now, they were trolling Rapalas off <coughs> excuse me, off the Wakoy Jetty, um, and they landed a pair of big king mackerel. So, uh, you know, a lot of guys just think of uh, of funny fish casting to them, uh, but a lot of them are taken trolling. I was talking to a couple of guys this week. That's how they were able to get in on them. And as you're going to see in a little while, one of our video report clips, another way to hit them is trolling Rapalas, uh, Yozuri Crystal Minnows, and the like. So stay tuned for that. Now, next up, TJ Kopecki checks in with a video report for the East Bay with info on blackfish, porgies, sea bass, albies, and much, much more. Take it away, TJ. Thanks, Toby. Hey guys, nice to be back again, uh, reporting for the East Bay, Mount Bay, Maho Bay. Uh, things are just probably like on fire like they are pretty much everywhere uh, in the fishing area that we that we fish. Um, new reports of uh, Tatog, more and more coming up. Uh, the usual haunts would be the Warren River, the Warren River Bridge, the Barrington River Bridge. Uh, if you're on a boat, you can try Ohio Ledge out in the middle of the bay. There's a couple of wrecks out off of Prudence Island that are producing fish. Uh, just starting to see more and more. Uh, talk to Manny at Lucky Bait and Warren, selling lots of crabs. Uh, still selling lots of squid for uh, guys that are still trying to catch those big uh, pork chop scup that are out there also in the bay. Um, I was able to get out this weekend and do a little ground fishing myself. Uh, we fished under Mount Hope Bridge in Bristol. Uh, we did very well with sea bass, uh, probably 30, 40 of them. The only thing was is none of them were keeper size. There's uh, lots of small ones out there, but um, if you can weed through them, I'm sure you're gonna get on them. Uh, we were basically just using gulp, uh, trying to fluke fish at the same time. I did score one keeper fluke. Uh, it was a very nice fluke, it's 23 inches long. Uh, it was great table fare, um, and it's like a bonus to catch that. Uh, in mid-September right now. Um, other thing is, is there are some albies coming into the bay and I'm sure this week when you see this report it's probably going to gather up more and more and more. There's so much bait that's inside of the bay. Uh, I'm sure those fish are coming in to actually maraud them along with the bluefish and the stripers that are there. Um, there are some reports of some striper schools breaking up just like the bluefish were. Uh, over in Mount Hope Bay, off of Borden Lighthouse. I didn't see them, but I talked to a couple of guys that were on schools catching them. Uh, also, if you're if you're out there and you're looking for those uh, those albies inside the bay, um, look for those windblown shores, uh, the rocky ones that where you can find some depth, real deep depths that come up real shallow on those shores. Th those are the spots to look for those albies. They'll be pushing that bait right up on that shore there. Um, so. There's a variety of stuff that works for them. Uh, just whatever works best for you, whatever you're confident with. Uh, but if you get out there and get them, hey, good luck and uh, tight lines. We'll catch you next time. 
Thanks a lot, TJ. Uh, of course, appreciate the videos every week. Now, um, as he noted there, there's been some improving blackfish action up in the bay. Um, I received several good reports of inshore blackfish action in Rhode Island, um, uh, off of Newport, Narragansett, some of the guys I talked to up off of Westport, Jason Colby, uh, Little Sister Charters, he's been doing well on them. Um, and speaking of blackfish, for some reason, that's all we got for entries this week in the Coastal Kayak Clash. Uh, and they were all from the same angler. He he, he had a, a solid entry and then even sent in an upgrade as New Jersey's Bob Gross moved into second place in the black fish category with a 20.75 fish, inch fish, excuse me. He had been sitting in third place for the TOG, uh, moved up in a second. Nice job there. There was no other movement this week. Um, and, and surprisingly so, I, I really thought we were going to get a bunch of Albi entries in this week for the Coastal Kayak Clash. Um, despite them being pretty consistent from the canal all the way to the middle of Long Island Sound, they just did not come through. Now in the Rhode Island area, uh, the West Wall has been a very good for sure bound anglers. And Eric Mahoney checked in. He sent me an email of a nice Albi that he caught over the weekend at the West Wall. He said he was throwing a silver side color epoxy jig. And I talked to a couple of other guys who hit the wall um, over the weekend and days since and got into them as well. So good spot if you want to hit Albies from shore, as is really all of the breachways of South County. Those are very good options to get your shore Albi right now. And continuing with the Albi theme as well as a few other subjects as you'll see, Dave Bocas was out this weekend hunting albic false albacore along the roady beaches and here is his full recap. Thank you Toby. Coming at you today on my buddy's boat, the All In, where the good weather has made it possible for us to try to get in on these Albies that we hear so much about, not in the surf, on a boat this year. So we decided to try to get in on it with a the few dozen other boats chasing these fish around started Friday. Blitzes, birds, and boats. That's what it was. We come out the breachway and it's going nuts everywhere. And uh, I'm trying the, my buddy's trying Yozuri. I'm trying the uh, epoxy jigs and uh, no real success. But uh, his daughter, his two daughters absolutely hammered the porgies still. These little fish bites you told us about. And, uh, then we uh, move on to Saturday, Saturday morning, bright and early, before dawn, we head on out. Uh, I'm never, I've never be one to spot burn, okay? So I can't tell you where we were, Toby. Over at Watch Hill, we tried, we tried getting in on them, ch chasing these fish around with the rest of the boats. My buddy says, you know what? I've only ever been successful trolling. So we're gonna troll these crystal minnows, Dave. And I'm like, you're out of your mind, Jeff. He says, no, we're going to troll him. Instantly, he's on. Big guy. I, I've only caught one Albi Lipinski in my whole life, but it was nowhere near the size of this monster he caught. And that was it for the day. A, a couple of regular mackerel I managed to troll up. And for the late afternoon, we took the family, headed on over to Narrow River. Figured we'd give, our shot, uh, give it a shot over there. After a mile-long walk out to the, to the point, we didn't catch a single thing. But when the tide turned on the way back, fish blitzing, a little too much weed in the water to get a clean cast, but they're there, probably, probably some schooly bass. Once again, this morning, up at the crack of dawn, I look over, I says, I says Hol holy mackerel, Jeff, your daughter coming with us? Little Addison. 5.30 in the morning, she's a sport. This girl can fish, nine years old, I tell you. Out we go, I'm, I won't tell you where, all right? Back at Watch Hill. We're trolling up and back the reef. Same spot every time, wham. Couple of bluefish. Her rod goes off, I hear, help me, help me. There's Addison. Ch check this out, you're not gonna believe this. What you got there, Addison? Uh, hold it up, hold it up to the camera. I don't know, is Spanish it on there? Spanish mackerel? Spanish mackerel. Holy, holy mackerel. There it is. Spanish mackerel. I got a couple of bluefish. We went out bottom fishing again. Porgy, left and right. Trying to get in on the black sea bass, but unsuccessful. But it was one fish-filled weekend, I'll tell you that much. And we're going to call it a day. Should be in the surf pretty soon. Back to you, Toby. 
Thanks a lot, Dave. Um, you know, we were probably working some of the same waters on Saturday because I was out chasing Albies with uh, Tom Fusini and Sean, Sean Barham. Excuse me. Uh, we were on the boat first thing Saturday morning, spent about half day out there. We worked the areas from uh, Kwani almost all the way back down to the Thames River in Connecticut. Now we had fished the entire stretch. As Soon as it got light, we started seeing Albies. They were all over the place, but uh, while the action had been excellent from what we'd heard the couple days leading up to it at the end of the week, that east wind that we were dealing with seemed to have the fish broken up. Smaller little pods of fish, smaller pods of bait, and we really struggled to put any Albies in the boat. Now eventually we were able to put two in, um, uh, both landed by Tom. Uh, he got them on the tsunami forktail candy jigs in the green color uh, but we threw everything that day uh, he had one other fish hit at which he dropped but sean and i were unable to hook up with any albies we had uh, the hardtail skunking for the day but we more than made up with it all three of us actually with mixed bottom fish we had sea bass we had porgies uh, some big sea rob and even some blue fish to go along because when the fish were not breaking in between blind casting we were simply dropping the different jigs that we were using right down to the bottom and almost every spot we were at we had those bottom fish to at least keep the action going and keeping the bet rods bent. And then last up, heading into Long Island Sound, got a, a message from Bob Pacheco. Uh, he said he was fishing in the sound this week, uh, targeting bluefish, working around the east can at the middle ground. And he had a couple of newbie bluefish uh, fishermen on the boat with him, Evan Werner and Connor Ross. And they got into some pretty big fish, landing a bluefish up to a solid 15 pounds. Uh, I myself haven't run into any sort of bluefish in that size range. I know a couple of weeks ago with the big bluefish tournament, a lot of guys would have been psyched to have found those. It always seems to be the way though. Once that bluefish tournament passes, that's when the big fish show up locally. But nonetheless, if you wanna get a big bluefish this weekend, hopefully they're still out there for you. All right, and of course, if you wanna head out and fish anywhere this weekend, be sure to start off your trip by visiting thefisherman.com. Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.